All right, so before we go to Aaron in Sacramento, I want to let everybody know this is a different show today. Um, this is a... Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Leave it. This is a different show. It's going to be... Uh, hang with us. It's going to be um, incredible, but um, we're going to take this in a little bit different direction than we normally go. Aaron, this is Deloney. How are you, man? I'm doing pretty good, Dr. John. How are you? Given the circumstances, that's just, that's pretty incredible, man. Well, I'll have to give you an update at some point, but uh, yeah, given the circumstances, it's been the worst month of my life. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so... Um, for the listener and for you, um, you oh, this is your story to tell, and so um, I'd love to you hop in here whenever. Um, I Kelly let me know um, last week that you had reached out to us and had had a hurricane and an atomic bomb and everything else you can imagine go off inside your home, and you reached out and wanted to wanted to spend some time together, and man, we cleared the whole deck and. This show is just going to be me and you. That's it. And um, I can recap what I know, or if you feel comfortable, I'd love for you to tell your story. I know you've rehashed this a million times um, in court and in the public and all, you know, partridge in a pear tree. But um, if you're comfortable, I'd love for you to <laughs> tell your story and give us an update of where you're at and then how I can help. Yeah, man. sure. Yeah, I can I can kind of give you a, the backstory just in my own words. Um, I haven't had to tell it in court yet, thank God, but... Um, Yes, I was take you back four weeks ago today, um, just a regular Monday day. I was at work myself with my daughter. I'm a owner operator trucker. So I daddy daughter day, you know, I have five kids by the way. Um, oldest is 17. My youngest daughter is eight and there's three boys in between 16, 13 and 10. Hmm. And, uh, my oldest boy was at college. And so my mom, my mom, my wife was home with uh, my three middle boys and uh, just a regular old Monday, nothing was going on. My wife was just sitting at the uh, dining room table in her house. And um, little did we know that my, uh, my older two boys at home, 16 and 13 year old had premeditated um, an attack on, on my wife and uh, carried out just out of nowhere. Um, no one saw any signs coming. No one, no one would have expected it. Still is baffling four weeks later. It makes no sense. Um, but they did, they, they're in their little minds. Their plan was to attack mom and I think escape, you know, leave the house, take the van. Cause the older one has a driver's license and, and leave, leave the state and who knows what they were going to do. But that was what was in their mind. Um, my older son took it upon himself. I, I don't think this was, this was pre-planned, but he went into a murderous rage and actually tried to kill my wife. Mm. Um, and very nearly did. Um, mm. and then they came at her with knives and, uh, a, a baseball bat. My oldest son had a baseball bat. Um, again, unprovoked, she was stabbed quite a few times. Um, she was beaten over the head with a baseball bat. My 10 year old who was not in the same room, heard mom scream and came running to see what was going on. I went running for help and, uh, he got taken down by my older son with a baseball bat, took a really, really bad, uh, head injury hmm. to the back of his head. And, um, <clears throat> It lasted about 45 minutes, you know, moved from different room to different room. My wife escaped to this and that and um, ended up in, in our bedroom. And uh, she ended up talking, getting my 16-year-old to talk and getting to talk and getting to talk. And she started praying for everybody and, and asked us for more time, you know. Um, she thought her life was, you know, she told me that her, she thought her life was over. Um, and she just started, you know, asked for some time to pray for everyone. She started praying and um, got him to talk and asked, you know, what, you know, what he was planning on doing and why he was doing this. And he, he was murderous. He, he, he stayed it outright. He, he was planning on, on murdering her and he thought he'd already killed my, my 10 year old son. Turns out it wasn't true, hmm. but, um, he got her, got him to talk, got him to talk. And eventually after 45 minutes or so, he called 911, um, confessed to what had happened, told him there was my, my wife was hurt. My son was hurt. And, uh, they told him to give the phone to my mom, my wife, I keep doing it. I'm sorry. No, that's okay, my man. wife. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so nine one one was, was on the phone with my, my wife. Uh, they put the weapons down and went outside and cooperated. Um, deputies came and they arrested my two sons and, uh, they took my youngest son and my wife to the emergency room and, uh, immediately went into surgery life-threatening injuries, both of them. Um, 
I got wind of something funny going on because my son actually sent a message over the internet to a friend. I still don't even know who that is, who called our church, who called me and said, Hey, I got this really funny message about, you know, your son. And so I actually raced home. because I was only about a half hour away and I couldn't get hold of my wife. And I can't, I showed up and there was a dozen de- deputies around my house. Whoa. Was closed. Jeez. And, uh, they wouldn't tell me what was going on, but I, I knew it was bad. And yeah. I, you know, asked, is anyone dead? <laughs> I figured someone had to be dead for all that. And thank God that wasn't quite the case, but it was close. Yeah. It was very, very close. Um, so I don't know where you want me to skip to from there, but that, that's what happened. Um, so let's, let's stop there for a minute. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I don't have any words, man. And you've, you've obviously listened to the show and you know, that's a rare moment, <laughs> but I've had a word, um, yeah. but brother, my heart's broken for you. Yeah. I didn't either. I spent the afternoon in that hospital, both my wife and my younger son were in emergency surgery at two different hospitals, by the way, which made it. Oh yeah. Most, uh, yeah. Just that yeah. I did the complications down the road, but, um, I, I, I just, I was pacing around the hospital, not knowing all, all I knew in the moment was my son was completely not responsive. Mm -hmm. His pupils were dilated. He had no response whatsoever, but they took him into surgery and they, you know, he had traumatic brain injury. Sure. And, um, but I knew my wife going into surgery was repeating my name and my phone number over and over and over trying to get Mm -hmm. them to call me so that I knew what was going on. And so I, I I was hopeful that she, (laughs) I knew she wasn't dead. Yeah. Um, but I, um, when I got, when I got a debrief from the doctor after like five hours of pacing the hospital from about my son, uh, they, without using the words, they basically told me he was not going to survive. Yeah. And they, they, they lowered expectations. They you know, said, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah. Um, they have some sort of scale they use when they bring him to the hospital. It's like a one to 15 for brain injuries. Right. He was a one. He was a one. Wow. <sighs> they, they, they had no hope that this kid would survive. Hmm. And so for, I mean, Lord willing, none of us are ever in this situation. Yeah. Um, give, give people a, 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 some words about the disassociative effects of you're just walking. I mean, the lights are brighter and things feel like you're in a video game or you're not real. Walk people through just pacing the hospital. Um, all the text messages start coming through. This is in the media. This is all over the place. It wasn't, it wasn't that first day, uh, oh, okay. that first night, you know, not in the first hours anyway, you know, that took a little while. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, in the first in the hospital, I'm pacing the hospital. I got a hold of my son that was in the college and they, the, the sheriff's, uh, they had a PR person on site by the time I got there. He actually, he was in civilian clothes. He actually drove me to the hospital and my daughter who was with me. Oh, that's great. And, and then he went and picked up my son. So the three of us were at least together in the hospital, but I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea what to tell my kids. And I felt like I should be sitting there broken down crying, but I wasn't. I was just kind of, uh, <laughs> I don't know, which is one of my kind of questions for you long term. I, I still feel kind of just numb about that. Absolutely. Thing, you know, it's kind yeah. Of weird. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to those Probably. questions. So, yeah. But so in yeah, the moment, it's just completely numbing. And it's just, you know, you don't, you don't plan for something like that. Obviously no one does. This is something you read about on a, a you know, in the news or something. Right. And all of a sudden you're in it. Oh, man. So three or four weeks have gone by now. Walk us through yeah. what the last three or four weeks have been like. <laughs> Maybe the best three or four weeks of my life. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll skip right to the end. My, my wife is out of the hospital. We, um, wow. She's gonna, yeah, I didn't, I, hadn't heard yeah. that, man. Oh yeah. And my, my son, I'm in the hospital with him right now. Well, not with him. I'm in the next room over, but, um, he's, he's going to be discharged in the next couple of days. John, Stop, dude. For a really? Yes, it is absolutely a miracle. No one can really fathom what has happened to, like I said, I, I had faith. My, my wife would make it out of this in some fashion, but I thought four weeks ago that I was going to lose my son. Wow. And four weeks later, they're literally talking about discharging him tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, Wednesday. What's his cognitive capacity? Amazing for where he is. Wow. <laughs> he's walking. He's talking. He's eating. He, I mean, they took the feeding tomb out last son, uh, this last week because he spent the whole week eating everything they would put in front of his face. He's yeah. got the appetite of an amazing ten-year-old little boy. Of a ten-year-old, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And can I have a snack? Can I have a snack? Can I have a snack? Yeah. I mean, so the you know the last four weeks, for four weeks, or sorry, for a week, he spent 
completely sedated. He was in the, the PICU, the, the pediatric ICU right. yep. at, at the Children's Hospital here, and completely sedated. He had monitors everywhere, breathing tube, feeding tube, the whole nine yards. They were, you know, uh, uh, drains out of his head for mm-hmm. excess blood. It's just that whole thing, you know? And after the first couple of days when it was apparent he wasn't going to die, which that's what we all thought. I mean, you know, the nurses, everything. But after a couple of days, the swelling wasn't getting much worse. And it was looking like, okay, this is going to be okay. But even at that point, then there's, you know, you have no idea what this kid's life is going to be like. Right. You don't know if he's going to come back at all. He might be brain dead. Even if he comes back, we were getting warnings over and over from nurses about how, um, I don't remember the terminology, but they had terms for, different kind of outbursts that they would have or different personalities that they would come back with sometimes. And, you know, they were telling us this kid's not going to be the same kid, even if he makes a a recovery and they're looking at six to nine months in the ICU and all of this stuff. And so we spent about a week there. And after a week, they, 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 his body was good enough that they could take the sedation completely down. Hmm. And then he started to kind of wake up and, after a couple of days, he could kind of communicate a little with his hands. You know, he could give a thumbs up or he get, you know, one finger for one, two finger for no, or sorry, one finger for yes, two finger for no kind of thing. Hmm. And so he could communicate just little bits like that. And then, you know, a week and a half later, I, I mean, he was getting better and better. And every day the doctors were just amazed. They finally took him out of the ICU and moved him to a regular hospital room because there wasn't any need for that level. You know, took him the breathing tube out after a week and a half or so. And he was in the a regular hospital room and... Oh, I got to add in just the whole, this whole COVID nonsense. I mean, I'm in California, dude, it's, it's crazy out here still. <laughs> and so they only let two people on the visitor list total. You can't change it around. It's not two at a time. It's two people total. Hmm. And so it's been basically myself and my mom, his grandma, are like the only two people that have been able to see him this entire time, which Yikes. is just crazy. Yeah. And adds the whole emotional toll of it all. Absolutely. But um, he was in that hotel room and I can't tell you the excitement one morning I was, my, my mom was up visiting with him in the morning and I was going to come relieve her at some point, And I got a text from her saying, uh, when are you going to be here? Uh, your son wants to know. And hmm. I thought that was kind of a weird thing to say. Cause I was, you know, at that point he was communicating ones and twos. Yep. And, uh, this was like a week and a half ago. I came around the corner into his room and he looked me dead in the eye and said, hi dad. And that was the first word that I heard out of his mouth. <laughs> Brother, man. Hey. I'm smiling ear to ear too, Aaron. I can hear yeah. you smiling on the phone now. That's amazing, man. It, it's been an amazing recovery. Yeah. And, um, it, you know, that's all good. I mean, there's all the other stuff we're going to deal with. I got oh, yeah. kids in court and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, let's the, the, the son himself is just, it, it's just been amazing. And like I said, we're out of the hospital in a couple of days here. He's walking, talking. He's got to wear a helmet because he's got a piece of his skull still missing. Sure. But, um, outside of that, he, he looks like, and he talks a little slower than he used to, and he's going to think a little harder, but outside of that, he's the same kid that I knew and loved four and a half weeks ago. Absolutely, you know? man. And some of that, some of that speech is, can be anesthetic related even. And so once you get him yeah. out and get yep. him into his own environment that, um, that's dude, that is incredible, man. Thank you for sharing that. You just made my whole day. Yeah, um, absolutely. So the other side of that is, is you've got two kids who are in the court system for, Yep. At some level of attempted murder, and they were pre- arraigned. They were arraigned several weeks ago with both of them, two counts of attempted murder. Okay, is anybody being tried as an adult? Uh, my older son. The state has declared they are going to attempt to. Wow. Yes. Sixteen. Yep. Jeez, man. And so, walk yep. me through the feelings you have on the other side of this. So you've you've got the trauma of I just may have lost my best friend and partner and wife yep. and I may have lost my 10 year old baby son. Yep. And Oh my gosh, incredible. They're safe. And now you've got this other side of this conversation, which is, yep. <laughs> I've got two, two kids that tried to murder my, my family. Yep. So yep. walk me through what's in your heart and mind there. It makes everything weird They're, They've appointed special lawyers that are not, um, the public defenders because of the circumstances with, you know, I and my wife are victims and parents at the same time. So it makes the whole legal system weird when I'm talking to detectives. Sometimes they're talking to me as the parent and sometimes they're talking to me as the, you know, (laughs) father of the accused. As a victim. Yeah. 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 And, and so you gotta, you gotta walk that line. But, um, I mean, long story short, they, like I said, they both got arraigned in court. There, there's definitely a, uh, an aggressor and a follower situation going on between the two of them, but gotcha. in the eyes of the law, they both participated in some fashion. 
Yeah. And so they're both guilty of, of attempted murder. And I mean, thank God for them. It's, it's as little as that, you know, given how, how brutal it was. It could but have been. Man. I've, I've met with, uh, both of myself. I'm the only one that's gotten in front of them other than lawyers, yeah. um, and, and other counselors, um, that are in the juvie system. And that's tough. I mean, you sit in front of them and tell me about your conversation with your 16 year old. That one is difficult. I've only got in front of him once. I was going to get in front of him here in a couple of days again, but they wouldn't let me see him for a couple of weeks, given the, the weirdness of the situation, but they finally did a couple of weeks ago. And, um, he was very, um, reserved. I don't, I, I've been thinking about how to put this because I don't, I don't know the, the, the psychological mental illness world, but I, yeah. I do think in, in conversations with a couple of people that have met with him in the juvie system, there may be a burdening mental illness of some kind going on with him. We don't know, obviously hasn't been diagnosed and I don't want to put anything in his mind. That's not there, sure. but in, in speaking with him in person, um, I mean, he did meet with me. He didn't refuse, um, but he was very reserved, very down. He said he regretted what had happened. Um, but he, he was so, it looked like depression to me. It looked like a kid that was depressed and understandably so sure, at this yeah. point. His, his and, life as he knew it is over. Yeah. 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 And wow. he had so much going for him, but yeah. he just in the, the look in his face, you know, just showed d- depression. It was a and ghost. I, yeah. Yeah. And I, in hearing my wife tell the story of that day, I, I don't know if it was some sort of, I mean, I've heard the term manic attack. I don't know. I don't know if there's any media going on in that moment, but it, it was such a high and low between the, when that thing started and when it ended that day. And then I'm looking at him now and he's, he's not that kid that could do something like that. And yeah. You know, yeah. he just looks depressed and down. He says he regrets it. But he's not, not sure what to do. Obviously he's a 16 year old kid. He's he a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what to do with them either. I'm not, I've never had to deal with courts and judges and all this stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's not my world. Well, dude, but, um, as we get into what do we do next, think number one, thanks for telling your story and for yeah. unpacking that. I know that's a horrible story. We could probably spend another few days together talking about your other two kids. You got a younger daughter who was with you who just lost everything, yep. and you've got an older child who's in college who just lost everything. And, um, here you are, Dad, at the epicenter here, having to hold all this stuff together. The two kids who are in the court system now, who you so badly want to love and believe in, and who also tried to murder yep. your wife, and yep. you've got your recovering two traumatic brain injuries in your home, one of which is the other, <laughs> I would say half, but let's be real. Um, you're a truck driver, <laughs> so she's the other 85% of <laughs> you know the person who runs the house. Absolutely. and. And you got two other little kids who, if they had friends that this had gone through, you'd be there for them because it'd be traumatic and it's in their own house. And so yep. here you are in the middle holding a unspooled sweater, just a pile of string. Man, well, so- that's what I feel like. I feel like I am in the middle of everything. I'm, I'm the dad. I'm the husband. I'm the father. I'm the, the you are. son of the grandparents that are there. I'm the, you you know, I'm the point of contact for the police, for the lawyers, for everything. You, you know? are, man. So- Let's take some time, dude. Um, I, you're still in this. You said it best. You haven't you haven't just fallen apart. You haven't cried. And there's that weird meta moment that starts happening thinking, huh, I would have thought if my kids were incarcerated or I would have thought if my wife was almost going to, was, was almost um, about to leave us that I would act this way, but my body's acting that way, right? So you have this almost right. meta disassociative. You start talking to yourself in the voice behind the voice, right? Like what's actually <laughs> happening, right? And uh, then there's those weird day. nights yep. you just go home and like, I'm just going to turn on the office. And it's this like, you're here, but you're not here. Right. Um, mm-hmm. so dude, any questions you want to ask, I'll go there with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It is that weird feeling of being in the middle. You, you know, I don't, I don't watch the office, but I sit around playing stupid video poker for hours in the evening, just whittling away time when I, when I have my own time, you know, <laughs> Yeah, that's my, yeah. that's my, my, my numbing agent, I guess. It's just, just killing random time, staying up way too late. And then I'm, I don't sleep because, you know, everyone yeah. t- yells at me about getting enough sleep and eating and <laughs> <laughs> exactly. easier said than done. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. So but, for whatever it's worth, you get a pass for a few days. Okay, cool. Good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you get a pass. All right. So man, let's, let's do this. Any, Tell me what's on your heart and mind and how I can, how I can help. Again, I'm, I don't even know, John. I, 
I guess, I guess I need, I need a little help on just all these different, all these different pieces. I got my wife that I can't really even share everything with, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with the family. I, I, I can't really talk to her about my older sons, you know? Yep. It's like, but I can talk to her about my younger son that, that is recovering so amazingly. We talk about him all the time. And, you know, my, my, you mentioned my 17 and my younger uh, daughter that they're probably the, the easiest going about this whole thing. Cause they're somewhat removed from it. They weren't there. Right. And my oldest son can go back to college. My youngest daughter is with family, just kind of removed from the situation playing with the cousins all the time. You know, she's good. Um, so I, I, I have to talk to different people about different aspects of it. And it feels so bifurcated. And, you know, I can talk to the detectives about my son, but I got to be careful what I say, because I want to, you know, add fuel to the fire that, you know, could, could put them in jail longer, but at the same time, maybe I want them in jail longer because they tried to kill my wife. And right. I feel just very torn apart in all these different ways. And so I just, I kind of try to ignore a lot of it. You know, I don't try not to think about all those disassociative, associative pieces, you know? Yeah. Um, so here's a couple of things I'll give you to walk through it. And then you stop me and ask any question anytime. Okay. okay. So number one is you got to have one, two, five, nine people that are going to walk through this thing with you. And I want you to think of this as you're the quarterback now for everything. And you got to have an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator and a head coach somewhere. Who are those people for you? Rattle them off for me. Oh, I mean, probably my my best friend, but he's not in the area. <laughs> I called him in the middle of the night. The other night. Um, he's my cousin growing up. Um, he, he's a guy that I can just call and talk to if I ever need just to talk about random stuff like that. Okay. I have a uh, a, a neighbor that was a um, oh shoot, what he? I don't know him well, but he was a, a counselor for tw- twenty years in the dealing with trauma and Aaron counselors can... are the worst. Stay away from those. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that's great. Well, I just don't know him very well. I guess it's a weird thing, you know? Sure. I don't know if it's a good thing though. If I don't, if it's, if I'm talking to someone about this nonsense that I don't have a relationship with really outside of, you know, friendly banter. Yeah. How, how about work? Like, are you still having, I mean, you're, obviously you're still having to go to work every day to pay the bills, huh? I haven't been to work in a month, man. <laughs> okay. Are they taking care of you or are you, did you just, no, Living I'm on a credit cards. operator. I haven't, I haven't made a dollar, but you know, we, we put out a GoFundMe page and made, raised a little bit of money and people have been very generous with okay. their time and with meals and stuff. So do you have a church community you're connected to or? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. uh, we, I've been getting a lot of input from our, our lead pastor and we have a, a church that loves us and we'll, we'll absolutely take care of it. We've been there cool. for 20 or 18 years. So fantastic. Cool. So here's what I want you yeah. to do. I want you to get out a piece of paper and I want you to come up with who your offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and head coach is going to be. And you're not really going to offense on one and defense on the other, but I'm thinking I need somebody to help quarterback my home, help take care of this house. Are there going to be meals here? Are the, is the light bill going to be paid um, in, mo- in days when I'm going to have to be in court and someone has to help my wife go to the bathroom, whatever those realities are going to be for you with two people with traumatic brain injuries. Um, is there somebody you can sit down with or two people or three people or a couple, um, like a, a husband and wife team or something you can look across the table from and say, over the next 60 days, I'm going to need you guys to step into my life. I'd like to invite you into that. And that might be a couple at church that you've known for a long time and you've never been that specific. But here's what the, the meta here is, you've got to sit down and make your needs known and risk asking somebody for help. Okay? Okay. And then I want you to get, whether it's your own attorney, whether it's an attorney at church, somebody you know, somebody that's gonna help you understand the legal jargon. Both your kids, I'm sure, got different ter- attorneys. If they're going to try one as an adult, yep. my guess is they, is that right? They got yeah, different, they're different ones? They're different. Yep, yep. Yeah, dude. And at some weird moment, you nailed it. You're going to have to sit by your kids because they're minors and they can't make decisions on their own. And you're the, <laughs> you're the victim, right? You're on the other right. side of the table. And this is going to cause some major tension in your marriage. And it's going to, you're going to have to have some, somebody be with you at all of these meetings if possible. And that might be your dad. It might be your mom. It might be a friend who's just like, man, I'm all in on this on with you. If you don't, 
and you, that, that can't happen, take a recorder with you so you can record these meetings because what's going to happen is you're going to start running together on you. You're going to think this one meant that, that one, and that one. I thought I was talking to this lawyer, and oh, that was actually my kid's teacher. It's going to start jumbling up in your head, okay? Okay. And you are probably, I would, I'd be willing to, my truck's not very nice. I'd be willing to bet my truck right now, you are still in some sort of shock. Your body has taken over for your brain, okay? That will slowly start to, you, you can't do it for long. It, your brain, your body can't do that long term. It will start to take back, it'll start to recede. And those feelings you're talking about, that rage, that anger, that those tears, you're going to be sitting there playing playing video games one night, you just start crying. For, that will come. It will come in heavy waves. And so having your best friend on, letting them know, I'm going to call you at crazy moments, okay? Please answer your phone. Um, and it might be, I'm going to call you and just let a string of expletives go that maybe have never been put together on the face of the earth, but they're going to come out of my mouth and I need somebody else to hear that because grief demands a witness. And they'll say, you good? And you'll be like, yep, just need to get that out. And it's 3 a.m. and they're going to hang up and everybody's going to go back to sleep. Or it may be, they just asked me um, if my son X, Y, and Z, and I know he did that, or I know he's got a journal, or I know his passcode to his phone, and the dad in me wants to say, I don't know where that is because I know what's on there. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, I need to I need to put that out there because he hurt somebody. He could hurt somebody again. Mm-hmm. And I need you to walk alongside with me and make sure that I make ethical, right decisions, not emotional dad decisions. Okay, and have somebody that's going to walk. So I'm just I'm, I'm those are just a few examples. Long story short, you're going to have to have people in your life that you assign to a post and that will walk through you, walk through this with you. Yeah. Okay. I think I, I think I have a, a lot of that. It just feels like it's so many different. It is. It is. People. That's why I want you to have a head coach, somebody that will come over, and this might be your dad, it might be your mom, it might be your pastor, yeah. it might be an attorney friend at church, it might be anybody, a mechanic friend at church, who will sit down with you. And this is number two on a piece of paper. You got to map this thing out. You know, like my buddy Dave Ramsey talks about. You know, you got to make a budget. Here's all the debts I have. I got to write them out and look at them on a piece of paper. That's what you've mm-hmm. got to do here. You got too much going on. All right. Go to Target or go to Walmart, get a, a folder that you can have and put every kid you have's name on it and your spouse. You're going to start getting medical bills out the wazoo. You're going to get legal stuff. You're going to have to be here at this place and there and that place. It's just going to, the, the paperwork and the stuff and the l- jargon and all you're going to have to have an organization. Um, is, your organization going to have to be top-notch. So start that at the front end of this thing, okay? <laughs> All the paperwork sitting in a big pile now. I know it is. I, I know it is, man. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> Go get a folder. Because what's going to happen in four months, someone's going to say, hey, I need such and such paper. What did you say? When you talk to such and such person on this day, what did you say? And you're going to be like, dude, I don't even know what day it was that day. <laughs> I want you to have a file folder full of all the paperwork neatly filed. It's going to help you sleep. Okay. Okay. I also want you to have a journal of some sort. It can be $5 or 10 bucks that you get at Walmart that just says, I talked to detective so-and-so at this time on this day about this. And in six months, in two years, in seven years, when this stuff is still in court or your kid comes up for parole or whatever happens, you're going to want to look back and say, here's what this was about. All right. And what I'm telling you is if the if you got piles of paper everywhere and you talk to this detective and you talk to that doctor and this bill collector and then your boss is like, "Hey, are you going to run a route or what?" Your brain is going to go hyperactive on you. And when it goes hyperactive, you're not going to sleep at night. And when you don't sleep at night, you're going to start getting really anxious and you're going to you're going to start slipping into your own depression. And so what I want you to do is to keep your environment spotless. Okay? Stay as or it may be the first time you've ever been organized in your life, and this is this is the season, okay? I'm gonna take a chapter from my wife on that one because she was the organized organized person in our family. You know what? She's gonna be so proud of you. She's gonna yeah. be so proud. Yeah. And if you suck at this, and this is me talking to the mirror here, ask somebody that is a friend of yours, who's a church, someone at your church, someone that's your neighbor. Say, I am terrible at organization. I'd really love it if someone could make it, could come by once or twice a week and help me with this. 
and you will have people line up to support you who want to help, want to love you, and they don't know how, and they're great at organization, but man, they're thinking this guy's dealing with, in fact, he almost lost two family members. Boom. They're like, oh, I can do that. Somebody can help with a meal train, somebody can, so that you don't have to worry about meals for the next 30 days. People want to help, but they need clarity. And that's where you can really help yourself and them by giving people jobs and direction, okay? Yeah, we've, we've gotten that outpour, out, outpouring of support with like meals and stuff, but you're right about the clarity. That I've just been trying to let it kind of happen. And that's right. Take, own, ask, take ownership of I, it, okay? Yeah. If I ask for something specific, it usually happens, but I just don't, I don't ask enough for, for what exactly I, I or we may need in yes. the moment. So that's the third thing here, okay? We've talked about getting people in your life. We've talked about organization. The third one is going to be grief. And you are going to have, I need you to hear me very clearly. The life that you knew is now over with a period at the end. Okay? I think I know that. I know you, I know. And most people don't have the courage to say that out loud to someone they love. And so I'm telling you as my new friend, there's a period at the end of that sentence. And a lot of grief gets hung up because people want to go back to life before the affair. They want to go back to the way things were before I gained this weight or before we had kids or before whatever the thing is. And we spend so much time trying to get back to the past instead of building a new future. And so I want you, because the temptation is if I can just get these kids like the right psychologist and then we can all get back home and we get my, my... 10 year old healed up and get my wife back. Then we can get back to this thing. And we're just going to go back to the, your life before this is now over. Okay. Okay. Everything forward is you building something new. And that's should be both terrifying. It is terrifying and scary. And it should also give you direction. Okay. Every time you think about, yeah, but it used to, you can stop and go, that part's over now. Now I am going to have the opportunity to rebuild my marriage and my wife's going to have a lot of healing. Here's what healing is going to look like for your wife. What did I miss? What was it about me that my kids did this? How could I create kids and grow kids? That that kind of stuff is going to unspool and unspool. And you're going to go through that too. So when I talk about you're going to get a different wife, you're going to get a, you're going to become a different husband. It's not that your psychology is going to be different. It's that y'all are going to be asking yourselves hard questions about what happened in our home, and those rattle people in their core as they should, right? Yeah, they're they're difficult questions to come face to face with for sure, and they're not going to have real good answers. No, there's there's no answers that's going to be satisfactory. Absolutely, and everybody deals with ambiguity differently, or that's just what happened differently. Or maybe you're going to find a journal or a bunch of social media stuff or a bunch of, oh my gosh, I could, I, we missed X, Y, whatever the things are that come out, or it may have just been totally random and few things are scarier than random, right? Right. It'd be a lot easier if we could point back to some abuse or to some thing. Oh my gosh, my kid just woke up and decided to do this. I almost lost my 10 year old. Um, so I want you to be hyper intentional about every time you start to lean back into it. We just need to get back to whew, that part's over. But you do need to you do need, do need to ask those questions, right? I mean, that is oh, it is a good dude, thing for, for sure. You'd be a okay. psychopath if you didn't answer those questions. Ask those questions. <laughs> okay. If you're not plagued with why and what were you doing and how and what was it about? Absolutely, absolutely, you got to ask those questions. And that brings me to the final thing here, number four, okay? And again, I'm just pulling these off the top of my head. I didn't know where this conversation was going to go. You, my brother Aaron, have to take care of Aaron. And your temptation over the next six months, over the next two years, is going to be to make sure everybody else in your world is okay. And it's going to come at your cost. And so what I'm telling you is I want you to never forget this. The best way you can make sure everybody's okay is if Aaron's okay. And that means you may have to get serious about your physical health for the first time ever. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. You got to start lifting weights and going on a walk. You're going to have to be intentional about what you eat. 
Because when I get stressed, dude, there's a special aisle in the grocery store and it's just covered in gummy candies and chocolate and shenanigans. It's incredible, right? You have to be intentional about what you eat. You have to be intentional about going to sleep. You're going to have to be intentional about getting a counselor. You've got a couple of years of work ahead of you at, at least, okay? Yeah, it's kind of a long road. It is. I've, I've it been is. relying on my my wife to keep me in the healthy with the eating aspect of our relationship for our entire marriage, basically. And, yep. And uh, now you're in the driver's seat. Have to change. That's yeah. a, there you there you go. That's right. And it's okay to feel angry. It's okay to feel heartbroken. It's okay to f- not be able to get out of bed for a couple of days. And that's when you're going to call on your friends and say, hey, I need someone to pick up so-and-so from school. I can't move today. Grief is going to look different for everybody. And you get to grieve how you need to grieve. But you got to be intentional about taking care of yourself, okay? I think I can work to that. I know you can. And I also know you're on autopilot right now. So here's the the last the thing I want to ask you of, okay? Okay. In two weeks... In four weeks, in five weeks, I want you to call me back and we'll have you back on. And I want you to let me know where you are. And it may be a season of, man, people are healthy, things are good. It may be you are in a black hole of despair and I want you to give us a shout, okay? Yeah, I can do that. And I'm going to ask you who's walking with you. Are you being intentional about taking care of yourself? Do you have a plan of grieving this? And do you have some organization going for you, okay? Okay. And last, last, last thing. Okay. Your oldest and your youngest, don't lose them in this process, okay? No, I'm worried about them, to be honest. Yeah. Like I told you earlier in this conversation, they're, they're doing the best just because they're kind of removed from it. And I did that somewhat intentionally. My, my oldest son, we had, I pulled him into it for a week or so, but after, you know, he can't go visit his mom. He can't go visit his son because right. of all the covid stuff. He's not, he's, he's kind of awake to me. So I told him, go back to school, go back to work. You know, yeah. there's not a whole lot you can do. And he's, um, he, he's doing good. He's a stoic character. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my, my daughter, she's removed from it and she, she's good, happy go lucky, but I'm a little worried that that goes on too long and they, they just kind of disappear into whatever they're going to disappear into. I've kind of lost track a little bit of, of, yeah. of both of them, you know? Do they, does your um, oldest who's in college live around you in any, any shape, form or fashion? Oh, he still lives with us. Oh, okay, great. Um, okay. So here's the deal. Yeah, I mean, Here, it, here's how you can do this. Okay. Every week in your calendar, and this is part of your organization, you get a calendar too. I want you to plan a meal with each one of them by yourself. Okay? Okay. When you And this will be in a season when you can't get out of bed, this will help you get out of bed. And in a season when they are so heartbroken, but they're scared to call you because they know you're heartbroken too, this will put, I, you'll get to put eyes on them. So I want you to let them know from this point, and you can tell them from now until the foreseeable future, you and me are going to breakfast every Tuesday morning. Build your school schedule around it. Build your work schedule around it. We are not going to miss this time together. And that's when you're going to ask questions like, how are you feeling? How are you doing? How's your heart? Are you angry? Are you pissed off? Are you heartbroken? All those things. And you're going to get all that. And I want you to take your daughter out. Okay. They need to see and touch dad because everything in their world is unanchored now. Yeah. And by them seeing you, you're going to see them and you're going to get anchored in too. Okay. I like that idea. My, my son and I, my oldest, oldest son and I, we went to church, just the two of us for the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, we went out to lunch after church two weeks in a row and we kind of gave it up, but I, Nope, Maybe back on that. for the next eight yep. years. Just put it in there, man. you got a long <laughs> road ahead of you. Yeah. All right, Aaron, I'm going to let yeah. you go, okay? But thank you so much for your call, brother. And we're so happy that your wife and son are coming home. That's incredible. And we will be thinking about you guys from afar as you go through the court process, as your family heals, and as you create a new tomorrow. Keep in touch, Aaron, and we'll be thinking about you, my brother.